Crystal Basin Vineyards? Crystal Basin Cellars. Cellars. What's the difference between, what's a cellar? That's like where you put it all? Cellars where you make the wine. Oh, okay. Vineyards where you grow the grapes. Where do you store it? We store it in the cellars. Okay, I thought, okay, I was like, it's a bit You're of a close. storage yeah, deal. Yeah. Man, so you, th 30 years you've been doing this? This is my 30th harvest. So the, we, so I started under the house, you know, bootlegging. Uh-huh, nice. And uh, made, uh, you know, first time we did three barrels of wine, and of which one was good. Uh-huh, is that and, right? Yeah, and uh, we found out that the red wines was much better than chasing white zen at that uh, way back when. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you guys are right there. What, what, what is the area? Right? I know where you are, right? That Chevron in yes. that zone. Apple Hill is what Up everybody calls it. Uh -huh. The town of Camino. And we're about five miles out of Placerville. And and then you gathered the grapes all out of El Dorado County, but but a, a big area around you. You pick and choose, I, I imagine. Yeah, there's um, 2,600 acres of grapes within El Dorado County. Wow. And we use 18 different vineyards and crush about 150 tons of grapes a year. Jeez. And uh, that means that uh, we get pretty purple. How, how many? How many people is it? What kind of how many people for an operation? I have like on this? three, uh, two full-time production guys mm -hmm. and a and a part-time. Um, we call them the kid. Uh -huh. And then every once in a while, I'll jump on the forklift if I have to. Uh huh. And and you're you're selling the wine right out of there. Yeah, we have 2,200 wine club members, and so we get regular visits from a lot of people, and they bring a lot of people in from different parts of uh, of the U.S. and a, a good amount of foreign folks too. Kind of the same mix that uh, the Tahoe visitors have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure coming up from there. So you brought three different wines all with uh, gold medals. That's right. These wines that I brought today just as kind of a show off uh, opportunity. Uh, all of the wines I brought won two different gold medals uh, over this uh, last summer. We enter five competitions a year and that's our external quality check. We're, um, you can always be overly impressed by your product and you need external yeah. input. Uh, so the Sangiovese won um, uh, two golds. Um, there's a uh, Triumphant as our Bordeaux blend that won uh, two golds as well. And then the uh, Campione is a Super Tuscan, which has got Sangio in it. That won best of class of region at the State Fair, which is best Sangio blend uh, of the of the foothills. You gotta be proud of that. I mean, like you said, you know, I know you love it, but now you find out other people love it too. You're winning awards. How, how much? How much does? How much did it affect with with the drought? And then even we had that heat spike. How much does that affect grapes and and, and the wine? Well, the drought um, found the grapes to be struggling, and the grapes were stressed just like the population was during the last part of the drought. And last October, when it started raining and even snowing up here, yeah, that was the end of the drought. And what that did put a bunch of water into the soil. It made all the fertilizer soluble and all the minerals then went down to the roots of the plants. So this year, the plants were really happy. They were growing a lot of leaves and a lot of canopy. We call it canopy uh -huh. uh, to get the strength back. I told you it was called canopy, Mike. I told you. We had a this big is, argument. You owe me a dollar. A buck. <laughs> so they, but that's uh, they recovered really nicely. Um, the vineyards have grown really well this year. The heat spike. Did the same thing it did to people. It mm -hmm. kind of shriveled them up, and everybody, uh, the vines kind of shrunk uh, their, their energy down, got cool. And then what's happened is that uh, the nice, tepid weather we've had lately has been perfect for grapes. Yeah. We've picked about 60% of our grapes, which means in this cool weather, late in the in the in the season, we're still getting really high quality fruit in. So we're excited about this harvest. I'm ask a dumb question: C Can you eat those grapes you use for wine? Are they just? I mean, what does that? What does it taste they're, like? They're is good. They're, they have a lot of seeds in them, though. So uh -huh. what you're used to buying at Safeway right. or wherever you're buying them, um, those are the. Um, they're kind of you know modified. Uh, I don't know they're, that they're GMO, but they're bred to not have seeds yep. and to be very large. And they come in at about 18 percent sugar. The grapes that we're using are 25 to 26 percent sugar, a uh -huh. lot sweeter. And so if you taste the grape juice right after we crush it, it's incredibly sweet. Uh huh. Like like regular grape juice, you'd get like far more. Far more. Far more. Yeah, it's about almost twice as sweet as Welsh's. No okay. and, and and what happens to the to the seeds? Is there something that that gets the seeds out of the process? Yeah, after the fermentation's done, which is adding yeast and kind of like bread when you mush it around and, okay. and you knead the bread. We this is good because I don't know the process. I should come down and see it. Yeah. Um, the uh, seeds uh, are uh, all the must, which is the crushed up grapes, are put into a press, squeezed really hard. The uh, 
uh, liquid goes on away and into the barrels, and then all of the leftover stuff goes uh, to cattle feed. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, or biomass, so uh -huh. none of it gets thrown out. That's that's incredible, man. And how how old how old are these are these these vines that, that we're growing the grapes on? Uh, there's a range. We're getting some um, kind of test grapes, if you will, from a four-year-old vineyard all the way up to a 45-year-old vineyard. Wow. Uh, and then we're also this year for the first time we're getting grapes from the Herbert Vineyard, which was the first vineyard planted in El Dorado County after Prohibition. Wow. Those are about 55 years old. So like old. the 30s then? The uh, well, post-Prohibition, uh, well, the, they were planted in the in the late 60s. Uh -huh. Okay. That, uh, all the grapes uh, were taken out in El Dorado County because there was no wine industry. Oh my God, that's awesome. And then, and, and then um, I know where you're at, but tell people, like, how do you describe where you are on Highway 50? So we're um, five miles out of Placerville. We're almost exactly between South Tahoe and, and Sacramento. Yeah. And the uh, we're face on the freeway. So so uh, if you uh, drive by too many times, we can throw wine corks at you. I won't <laughs> throw wine bottles. Here. There. But uh, uh, yeah, we have uh, front-facing freeway right behind the Chevron station cool. and Camino. And you made the drive up this morning? Uh, I came over from Carson. I did an event ah. over there. And we have a Northern Nevada distributor, so we uh, we like to work the Reno market because our area is their backyard wine yeah. area. Yeah. I was going to ask you how the traffic. How was the traffic coming that way from from Carson? Uh, nothing at all. No real yeah, construction. Just some um, cement mixers. All right, Mike. Okay, good to see you in here. My pleasure. Pleasure. Congrats on all those me. gold medals right there in front of you. Yeah, we're going to do it again. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break and we come back. Your seven-day Lake Tahoe forecast is up next.